Great. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Johnny Fitzpatrick. I, uh, I work in Lucy's team at DLAC. Uh, I'm head of the, the High Street <coughs> policy team. And so it's my team that has really been, uh, well, working with many of the kind of experts in the room, as you've heard, that has been, been developing this policy. I'm going to really talk to you a little bit about some more of the practicalities. So it's a little bit drier than some of the stuff you've heard already, but like important, I'm sure, for you to understand about the funding, where it comes from, how the program's going to work, the timings, those sorts of things. Um, I will kick us off and then I'm going to hand over to a couple of members of my team who will probably introduce themselves as they come up. So, um, and, and I should say, we've got a, this slide pack we will share after the event. So don't worry about making copious notes or anything like that. We've got a sort of a more detailed version of this, which we'll share around. Um, so we want to kind of briefly run through some of the, some of the kind of the, the introductory stuff, the, 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 the basic building blocks of accelerators, how we're gonna get the funding out, <laughs> how we propose to kind of monitor and evaluate the pilots. Obviously, that's a huge, important part of this. This is a pilot. We're looking at what we can learn for potentially bigger, more uh, nationwide interventions. And um, what support that we offer as well through, through government, but also High Street's Task Force and others. Uh, and then a little bit about next steps, what will happen uh, after today. Uh, so, what is next? Yeah, so... The, the basics. By now, you'll have you'll have realised that that what we we're calling a high street accelerator is is a partnership with with local people really at the heart of that partnership, um, and we're looking over this pilot for you to to develop and implement that long term vision, uh, so that you can really turn that 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 chosen area high street into the the the, the buzzing thriving high street we want to see, um, and it is a pilot, so we want to see what works really are encouraging approaches which are agile, that are, that are innovative, genuinely grassroots, community-led, and it is really great to see like a, like a diverse range of, of people here today, people not just from the local authority, but from community, from business. So then going on to the, the membership, uh, we are looking for, and great that some, we've got some sort of non-local authority representative chairs here already so we're looking for the chair of the partnership to be to be non-LA you've got the kind of four mandatory members here but other than that and we kind of really see it's important obviously that the, the local authority is involved you've got business property owners community organizations but other than that you know it, it really is up to you about who to involve whether that's you know uh, police universities and schools it's already been a lot of chat about you know local NHS trusts Whoever it is, we uh, really want the, uh, that to be up to you. Uh, but we also ask that the, the, the MP is, local MP is involved in some way as well, potentially in a consultative capacity. Uh, so on the selection, I just thought, we won't go into this in, in, in detail, because the point is you have been selected, but in case <laughs> you, are, you are interested, um, we, we, we designed a methodology uh, which, which produced a short list of potential local authorities, and that was based on, on a number of socio-economic factors, uh, as well as levels of commercial vacancy. So it's no surprise that we're hearing a lot of the same issues coming up uh, when we go around the room, because the, the kind of primary objective of, of the fund is about trying to support high streets which are struggling, which are in decline, which need that boost. So... Uh, that's how we got to those 10 areas. And then what we did was we asked sort of those, those 10 areas to go away and select a specific high street area that really uh, supported that objective of the programme. So was there a demonstrable need for intervention? Uh, and and a, is there a willingness from local stakeholders for partnership working? We can see from going around today that there, there certainly is, which is great. Um, we... We might actually come back to this timeline in future sessions today, and you'll have a chance to go through it. But look, this is, a, this is an indicative journey of an accelerator, how it might look over the course of the pilot. Um, but a journey will be different for, for each of your areas, you know, and it will very much depend on your local circumstances. So some of you are forming a partnership from scratch. Some of you already have a partnership that you're adapting. 
Some of you might have a local vision or master plan that you're, you're revisiting or adapting. And some of you are starting from fresh. So please don't feel like this is something you've got to stick to, but this is what we thought it might look like for some. So in this timeline, after today, you might go away and do some of that uh, initial field work to assess challenges, bring together the right partners, put the chair in place, then sort of moving into, into next year, because we're in December already, uh, you know, looking at, looking at that visioning, uh, developing and adapting, or developing or adapting a high street vision for the area, make, alongside that, establishing the right structures, you know, make whether it's having the right terms of reference for that, for that board, putting in place a bit of a plan for what you want to do, um, and probably looking then into the next financial year in the spring, actually like probably getting on and doing a lot of the stuff that you want to do, delivering some of those, those projects and delivering on that, on that vision and plan for your area. So appreciate some of this is really small and for you, so you might not be able to read it all, but yeah, we will share it around. Um, the pilot then officially ends, we say in March, 2025, but we kind of ask that you support us with the evaluation beyond that period. And um, again, I think that's, that is kind of really important as this is, as this is a pilot. Uh, bit on the funding, and again, sorry, this is a bit dry. Um, so, so, so the main part is the seed funding. Um, and so each high street accelerator will receive 237,000 seed funding. Uh, that's an initial 50,000 this year, uh, and then the rest to come uh, in the next financial year. And, uh, and that funding is really to support the core accelerator activity on the chosen high street. So it could be uh, using that funding to establish the partnership. We've had people already mention today about, you know, the importance of, of using funding to ensure you have the right resource, you know, that it can be, it can be used for that. Uh, putting that funding into developing the vision or even doing some of those kind of uh, early projects, some of those quick win projects uh, that you might have in mind. And, and we've got some ideas up on here, you know, whether you've got things like improving signage, lighting, street design, could be sort of, sort of like shop front renovation, cleaning, testing different events. Um, and then uh, and then alongside that, we have this opportunity to, to apply for this additional uh, green spaces funding. So we've got this additional 5 million total, and there's an opportunity for you to apply for up to 500,000 of that. It's majority capital spend, uh, and it's specifically to support greening projects on the high street. And I'm gonna say a little bit more about that later on, but uh, again, I think as Lucy mentioned this morning, that is optional. That is, uh, if you feel like you genuinely need it, this is the core part of it, setting up the partnership, coming up with that plan, that vision for your high street. If this is helpful, please do, please do access it. And I think that, you know, we've already heard from a few areas where they really kind of uh, benefit from it. But sort of in answer to a question I think that came earlier, the core is the partnership and the vision and the plan for the area. And if, if this is sort of, uh, this could be really useful for some, but appreciate not for all. Um, a treasurer. Uh, so, whilst whilst we so we expect the partnership to agree and to sign off all the spending decisions, I think that's really really key. But there will need to be this nominated body treasurer who who DLAP pays the funding to and who manages the budget on behalf of the accelerator. So what we are doing is we're working on the assumption that this will be the local authority. Uh, it's just the most expedient, efficient route, we think, for, for, for getting the money out. Uh, particularly, as you've seen, you know, it is quite a short pilot um, and you don't want people to kind of get, get, get too kind of bogged down. But, uh, and so that would involve the local authority entering into an MOU with, uh, with a memorandum of understanding with DLUC funding being paid out via section 31. But there is also an alternative option where, which would involve the treasurer being a non-LA partner. So it could be a different body. You could say you want to nominate a bid or, or a community organization. Um, but what we're asking for is to, for there to be kind of, a, to see the rationale for that. 
uh, because uh, the process is a bit more complicated. It requires additional approvals. Uh, so, you know, if you do want to do that, we'd say, can you, can you let us know? Well, I think we've got 15th of January. It'd be really helpful to understand that because we'd have to draw up a separate grant funding agreement for that. Um, I'm nearly there, don't worry. So finance, uh, sort of process. So for the, for the seed funding, for the 237,000, uh, as I said, 50,000 will be available this financial year. So upon signing the MOU, uh, assuming you are going with the local authority treasurer route, uh, so the funding will be released to the, to the local authority. And then at the end of this financial year, we'll request confirmation that that funding, that funding has been spent. And then the remaining, the, the sort of the 170, uh, 187,000 for next year will be paid out quarterly in arrears. So we'll be requesting a claim form at the end of each quarter to confirm that the accelerator spent the money and then we can release the payments. So this year, sort of paying in advance of need upon signing the MOU, given where we are in the financial year, and next year paying in arrears. Um, and then finally for me, a bit on the green space funding. So, so on accessing you know, that up to 500,000 green space funding, uh, accelerators, uh, you basically be asked to complete a short EOI form. Uh, and this is there to, to help fund projects which add to the vibrancy, the visual appeal of the high street. So for example, investing in a new parklet or a social space, uh, something to kind of attract people to these locations, increase dwell time, keep them there for longer. Um, so after this event, we'll send out the EOI, the EOI form <coughs> It's quite light touch. It asks if, ask a few questions of you, what you're what you're asking the, the, you know what what you're uh, asking for uh, the money for, and sort of how you're going to oversee and assure delivery. Uh, and we're going to be looking for responses to that by the second of February. So it gives you a little bit of time. You know, appreciate you'll need to get together with the partnerships, discuss, agree suitable proposals, and then if you think there is something. Uh, that you do want a chunk of that green spaces funding for, then uh, you can submit proposals by the start of February. And um, I'm going to pass on to, I think, Emmeline and my team, she's down here, uh, who's going to talk a bit about monitoring and evaluation. Um, yeah, so I'm Emmeline. I'm also in the High Street Accelerators team here at Alert, so I'll just talk you through KPI monitoring and then go on to the evaluation evaluation for a little bit. Um, just before I go on to what the KPIs are, I um, just want to touch on why we're monitoring and why that's important for us. So obviously it helps us kind of ensure that that program is on track, but it also can help us kind of like quickly identify any issues and potentially put support in if you need that from us um, and if it's something we can help with. Um, but also what's really cool about monitoring is that we can kind of learn lessons on like kind of in for real lifetime and we don't have to wait for our evaluation report. Um, so I've got the three KPIs there on the screen, I'm not sure if you can actually read them, but um, they essentially just boil down to um, number one is all about your partnership, so whether you've set that up, whether you're maintaining it. Um, number two is kind of how far along you are with developing your vision. And then number three is all about your project delivery and how that's going. Um, so that's what we're monitoring. Um, and then the next slide, I'll just take you through how we'll collect the kind of information. So there's two key ways that we wanted to kind of keep in touch with you. Um, the first is that we'd want to meet with each accelerator. So each accelerator with us at DLUC at least once a quarter, but we can do more meetings if that's what you want um, or ad hoc meetings for particular issues. Um, so this is kind of, just intended to be a bit of an informal discussion, really. Um, we can understand what's happening for you. You can give us some feedback. Maybe we can like tweak the program if you've got some good ideas. Um, but obviously, just do come to us if you've got ideas as and when. Um, then the second way of collecting the information is slightly more formal. Um, so this is with like a KPI return form, and that will essentially just be a questionnaire that will ask you to 
complete. Um, and that, again, would be once a quarter. Um, maybe three or four questions per kind of KPI that we'll be using to measure. For the project KPI, once you've sketched out all of your um, like project plan and you've got your milestones, it would be good if you could like send that to us. And then I think that's how we'll probably do a lot of our monitoring of the project KPI. Um, and we can keep, keep having discussions with you about whether the milestones are re realistic or what issues there are if, there's, um, if it's slipping slightly. Just on sequencing of our um, it would be good if we could meet with each of you before that KPI form is returned, just because then you can let us know, give us all the context, and um, we can be aware of what to expect on the, on the return form as well. Um, so that is the end of KPIs. Um, I'll just pop on to the programme evaluation. Um, so, yeah, as you know, it's a pilot programme. It's experimental in nature. Um, and we really want to test how this approach works, what works, what doesn't. So we've got 130K from the funding pot, um, which was originally announced in the Social Behaviour Action Plan. So we've ring-fenced that money, and that is going to cover our valuation costs. Um, we're going to have a partner agency who will carry out that evaluation. We haven't quite um, designed exactly what that evaluation will look like right now, but we are pretty sure it will be quite heavily qualitative. Um, so field work will kind of be interviews, focus groups, all the usual kind of qualitative um, research methods. Um, we'll keep you up to date with how that design of the evaluation is going. Obviously, love to hear your thoughts if you've got any um, as well. So do, yeah, just keep coming to us, keep chatting to us. Um, I just want to flag, I think Johnny also said this, but just to reiterate, um, we really do want to kind of understand basically what happens when government exits and when the funding ends. So that's why we're going to kind of ask you to continue engaging with our um, evaluation partner in those um, the field work basically, well into kind of autumn, winter 2025 when we've we've left in March. Um, so that's the overall program evaluation, and then the next slide here is all about what you might want to think about doing locally. Um, so we'd really encourage you to kind of use some of the funding or some of your resource to almost do a bit of like a mini evaluation for your specific accelerator. Um, so the reason for that is you can potentially attract future funding. Um, in, in, yeah, we've already heard from Hannah earlier. She um, explained that she had had like explained the impact, showed the evidence and was able to secure some fun, um, more government funding. So in order to show your journey of, of where you are and where, where you're going to go, it'd be really good if you could start thinking about baselining and collecting kind of your evidence or any kind of data that you've got about where you are right now and then potentially doing like a similar exercise later down the line so you can really sh demonstrate to potential funders exactly what impact you, has, you have made. Um, so that's the end of the evaluation section. I'll just hand over to Hannah now, who's on support. Thanks, Emmeline. So yeah, I'm Hannah Seston. I lead um, the High Street Accelerators um, Policy and Johnny's team. Um, so I just wanted to talk you through the um, final part of the policy today, which is on the support that we um, that you receive as part of the Accelerator programme. So as I think quite a few people have mentioned this morning, um, we really want to use the pilot to trial and test different ways of working and um, to see the potential benefits that it can bring to the high street. Um, and as a result, we know that um, partnerships are likely to encounter a lot of new challenges and new questions um, that might be tricky to deal with and need some working through. Um, so for us, a really important part of the programme is um, the support that we'll offer to you. Um, so there are two main elements of the support that you'll receive. Um, so the first is sort of tailored support from the High Street Task Force with things like establishing partnerships and developing visions, which I think um, the task force is going to talk through in a bit more detail later. So I'll leave that to them. 
Um, but alongside that, DLUC is developing a new High Street Connect service, um, which is intended to act as a one-stop shop um, for, um, for responding to any questions or issues with projects. Um, so on the screen there, there are the four different elements that we envisage um, being part of the High Street Connect service. Um, so firstly, there's sort of essential hubs for accelerator partnerships to access guidance and learnings from, um, so from DLUC, from the High Street Task Force, from other High Street um, experts, and from um, and importantly from each other. Um, so we expect that that will be sort of a Microsoft team site, um, and <coughs> we'll start building it sort of following the event. It will also be a forum to sort of engage in to ask questions of the wider group and sort of collaborate with each other. Um, so the second two are sort of peer-to-peer -peer networking opportunities and um, best practice events. Um, so we're intending to set up or identify existing opportunities um, on a range of different subjects that might be relevant to the um, local areas. And we'll start building a bank of events that we can share with you. Um, we're really like grateful for input on any kind of events or or um, networking peer to peer opportunities that will be helpful for you. So please do um, come to us if you have any suggestions. And then um, the fourth element of the um, support High Street Connect service um, would be a cross government problem solving function. So aim is to bring um, different government departments that are all responsible for different aspects of high street policy um, together to provide um, the accelerator partnerships with joined up advice um, and help solve their problems sort of in one place rather than going out and coordinating yourselves between all the different departments and bodies. Um, but yeah, we really want the um, High Street Connect service to sort of respond to your needs. Um, so we're really keen to work with you to sort of iterate and develop it um, during the course of the pilot. Um, and yeah, like I think we're asking for your feedback on what you'd like the service to offer and how it should function so that it um, works as effectively as possible for you. Um, but until we get to that point, um, just please come to us um, and through the High Street Accelerator mailbox, which I think you should all have the address for that bit. It'll be in these slides anyway. Um, and yeah, we'll... Um, start to develop the service from that point. Um, so those are all of the technical details of the programme that we wanted to talk through um, with you today. Um, I know that that's a lot of information and as Johnny mentioned, we'll send a sort of more detailed slide pack as guidance um, so that you have it all, um, have it all in one place. Um, but I just thought I'd give a really quick recap on the next steps. Um, based on all of that. Um, so there are sort of a couple of things that we're asking you to focus on over the next couple of months. Um, so on the screen there, um, you can all sort of read through them, but firstly establish the partnership structure and appoint a um, suitable chair that we've um, asked is from outside the local authority. Um, and then develop the, your vision um, for your high street, which the high street task force will support you on. Um, and also, as Emily was talking through earlier, um, start thinking, considering the baseline, baseline and information that you might want to, let, to collect um, so that you can understand what impact the program is having on your individual high street um, at the end of the program. Um, and then there are a couple of more um, specific things that we're asking from you in um, the coming months. Um, so, sort of on the funding side of things, um, Johnny talked earlier about the um, about the MAU um, for the seed funding, um, and we'll share that with you sort of following this event. And then we'd ask that if you would like to would like the local authority to act as treasurer for you to sign and return that um, to us as soon as possible. Um, or alternatively, if you'd like to um, nominate another treasurer, then to let us know by the 15th of January at the latest so that we can work through um, all of the processes involved in that. Um, we'll also share the EOI form for the, part, uh, for the green spaces funding. 
um, with you after the event and um, ask that you return that to us um, in with your proposals for how you'd use the funding in early February. And then lastly, um, just if you can share any thoughts on the design of the High Street Connect service um, with us through the through the High Street Accelerator um, mailbox, that would be really appreciated. So yeah, that's all of our policy um, <coughs> policy technical details um, for today. Um, that's at, that's the that's the email on there. Um, High Street Accelerator at levelup.gov.uk. Um, but yeah, just time for any questions that you might have now.